Seth Ferrosi, a man that's been retired from bodybuilding for almost 12 years now, actually I think more at this point, has put the needle down and decided to stop taking gear in order to prioritize his family and his health and make sure that he can be the businessman that he wants to be. In other words, the whole thing that his brand is about, a hardworking motherfucker. But as we talked about recently in a video, he decided to get back on the Sazul to try to chase about 240 pounds because he felt like he had always left something on the table with bodybuilding and well now that he's nearly 50 years old approaching at least he's decided to try again and in the past video i made i talked about what he could be taking he discussed that his trt was somewhere from 200 to 250 milligrams of testosterone which clearly is not trt and that his growth hormone dose was somewhere around four i use however in this recent Fuad Abiyad podcast, where he discusses his actual cycle, he breaks it down a little bit further. In the past video I made, it talked about the health consequences of someone like Seth and his demographic being a bit older and then having had a life that wasn't necessarily healthy in his earlier years, getting back on cycle in a situation where he had to come off due to health reasons, not being brilliant. I brought up scientific research. I talked about exactly everything that would be sort of deleterious to be doing at his age with lots of gear. And in that video, I also discussed the potential for addictive tendencies being developed when taking anabolic androgenic steroids. Most specifically, I talked about how bodybuilders can become very addicted to the steroids that they're using. And once they come off, it's usually only for a short amount of time until they realized that that compound was something that made them feel very good and happy. And so nonetheless, they end up getting back on, even if it was deleterious for the health or clearly is going to risk their life. The juice for them is worth the squeeze, the squeeze being their metaphorical life and the juice being gains. They think that it's just kind of worth it to throw one out the window and bring the other into uh, existence muscle tissue into existence but if you listen to seth on this latest podcast for like another person uh, it's i'm test primo and growth right now yeah but lots no not <laughs> <laughs> but like three grams <laughs> between six and eight hundred a week and of, then of, of test, primo of test and then 450 primo okay that's right modest forward. that's modest yeah. that's like trt plus 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 plus, 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 but okay. So wait, uh, 800 test, 450 primo. And then what else? Mastron? No, just growth. How much growth? Three, four, five, oh, five. Ten? I use five. I use. Yeah. So he's taking six to 800 milligrams of testosterone per week. And I love how he puts a range in there. Cause it allows you to think that maybe he's just taking less, but Let's be honest, he's probably taking 800 milligrams of testosterone, not 600. And he is taking 450 milligrams of primobolin, which is a bit of an odd dose if you ask me. I would actually imagine he might be taking more because if you get bare primobolin or remobolin, it comes in ampules and each of those ampules is 100 milligrams. And usually a bodybuilder won't just split an ampule. They'll use the whole ampule when they do use it. And or if he's going through the UGL route, the underground lab route, out where the pharmaceutical product is in this case primable and being created it usually still comes in 100 milligram per milliliter concentrations or 200 milligram per milliliter concentrations and so usually being a bodybuilder you typically round up or round down and 450 milligrams is a bit of an odd one when you're talking about such a wide range with testosterone being 600 to 800 milligrams just an interesting little tidbit there but let's just say 800 milligrams of testosterone 450 milligrams of primable and you said this is a, a modest cycle now if we just add these milligrams up we have 800 milligrams of testosterone, 900, 1000, 1000, 100, 1200 milligrams of total androgens, plus five IUs of serostim a day. They said jokingly that this was a modest cycle and for like another person. But, uh, it's I'm test primo and growth right now. Yeah, but lots between six and 800 a week. And of, then uh, of test, primo of test and then 450 primo. Okay, that's modest. That's modest. That's like TRT. I'm here to tell you that this is not a modest cycle for anybody. If you're a beginner, especially, this is quite an exaggerative cycle. Yes, people need to get to these doses to get a physique that they want, but usually when you're starting out or even on your third or fourth cycle, this kind of dose isn't necessarily needed to achieve results. And I think it might be confusing because a lot of people might see Seth and see how he looks and then contemplate that that might be what they need to take to look like Seth. Well, for one, Seth has taken much, much, much more in his life time and 
For two, that muscle tissue he has built and the physique he has is developed during those times he was taking a lot more. And, and for three, you won't look like Seth ever, ever probably in your life. He's a very specific genetic phenom and it would be quite hard to acquire his physique in most situations. But it is completely deleterious to his health to be doing all of this. Now, I'm not trying to talk shit about Seth. I love the man. I actually love his motto. I love what he works towards. I love his kind of intuition. And I talked about in the last video as well about his sort of ability to think outside of the box. Yet, in this exact situation, using gear when you had to previously come off due to health-related issues and you had a doctor warn you about your life being threatened because of what you're doing, and then also coming out in many instances and telling bodybuilders publicly that steroids are, quote, fucking killing you, and then just to get back on cycle yourself again with large doses of growth hormone, it is not a good look. In fact, it's it's pretty counterintuitive to, I guess, what we would hope Seth to be doing. I'm all for a guy getting jacked. I'm all for a guy getting big muscles, and, and I'm certainly all for people using gear if they have to. I'm, I'm in support of using gear. However, when you are saying in one statement that gear is going to fucking kill you, and another statement that you had to work one-on-one -on -one with a doctor, which he did, who had advised him to do lots of drastic things to improve his health and to make sure that he was living for a long time, and that was a whole sentiment for a very long time for Seth. And then three, now coming out and using gear and blasting it, not just using it, but blasting it and growth hormone and insulin, which you talked about in the video as well. After having made all those statements, it's a little bit curious and morally uh, uncalculated. <laughs> in a perfect world, we would have a situation where somebody who comes off of gear stays off of gear and they realize that the benefit of doing that is much beyond their physique because obviously it's not going to be benefiting their physique, but it's more so for their health. It's for their longevity. It's for their livelihood. And I think any critical human being could really come to the conclusion that staying on steroids for the majority of your life, if not all of your life, is going to be consequentially awful. I mean, it, it will knowingly ruin your cognitive function, ruin your circulatory function, and improve their chances of you dying, which isn't a great thing. And I don't know about you guys, but I enjoy Seth, and I'd prefer if he stayed on Earth for a couple more years. But at the end of the day, is a cycle going to kill you? No, it's not. It's gonna take consecutive months years in horrible cycles to actually do some deleterious harm to such a degree that's going to effectively kill you. One cycle won't be it. Two cycles, three cycles won't be it. But the addition of another cycle on top of all of the cycles that he had ran before is kind of my concern here. I want to be very clear, I'm not advocating against the use of steroids. I'm simply advocating for a man's health and talking about ways that he could probably look for his health in a different capacity. You know, if you were really interested in building physique and pushing this boundary of 240 for some particular reason because you feel unsatisfied with where you've reached to your physique goals in your career so far, there's better ways to do it that are likely much less deleterious to your health. And I'm sorry I keep using that word, but it really does fit here. What we could be doing instead is using a modest dose, a true modest dose of testosterone, 250 milligrams, which is what he was already at, to maybe 300 milligrams of testosterone, and then increase that growth hormone up to 10 or more IUs, and let that be the leverage to hypertrophy your physique, to increase the muscle that you have and already had, which you should have those myonuclei still stored up from the creation of that muscle, that adaptation created when you had initially been big using growth hormone to then exasperate the degree of returning muscle and then also increasing the new muscle without having the consequences to your renal system, hepatic system, and cognitive system that androgens in excess do give you. But at the end of the day, it's Seth's life and he can do what he wants. I think it's awesome because we get to see an amazing physique again. I think it's scary because the guy had to come off for health issues. And we recently saw this with John Skywalker, who I also made a video about. He was notorious for using recreational drugs, going to rave parties, but also using trend, testosterone, and the like. And now, just as of a while ago, it was confirmed he had a heart attack. And many people thought he died because no one had heard from him. Someone just got a text from him. It was Vitaly. Turns out he's alive, but in critical condition. And 
Who knows if he's actually going to make it? This is the kind of shit that happens when you just recklessly use steroids and joke about it, thinking it's just all fun and games, because it's not. You should be doing some really critical thinking about how you're going to use steroids testing and actually doing the measurements as far as like a biological passport. Where is my health now versus where is it in two months versus where is it in the next two months and so on and so forth. And if you see a downward trend, if you see things that aren't progressively improving, instead they're getting worse, you need to fucking stop for the better of your entire life. But I don't know. What do you think? Comment down below. I'd love to hear it as I do love to read the comments. Also, we have a Discord group where we talk about all this stuff, pharmacology included, and make sure that we can guide you step by step on how to do the things that you need to be doing effectively and appropriately without any risk. Also, shut up, Trump 2025. Let's fucking go.